that you're not going to put the information in there. You've got to put the information in. What if it comes to you from different schools without right. the information? <laughs> what if it comes to you from the previous school without the information? Can we send it to okay, you? I'm going to say this to you. Um, if you... You just want it to be dry snitches. That's what you want. Okay. <laughs> so this usually happens typically at the end of the year. And I've said this before in a meeting. I'm going to say it again. At the end of the year, you have a transfer form that you have to transfer records that you have to sign off now, and the other person on the other end signs off. If you let somebody drop off some folders with you, and you don't look in their box, before they walk off, it's going to be your problem. What if it doesn't come at the end of the year? What if it comes to you in the middle of the year? Without you? Okay, so if it comes to you that way, let, first of all, let me know. Because it may be something that's happening over and over and over and over and over again. And you say, hey, Miss BJ, and I mean, you can send me a card. Look, I keep getting stuff coming from, I do get messages like that, by the way. I keep getting stuff from this same school, and they never put the information on me. I would do a gentle little nice call to them and say, hey, we got to fix this, because it keeps them Call me first. Um, or as a colleague to colleague, try to call them and say, hey, um, I'm going to do this for you this one time. I'm so, now, just, now, come on, fam. Because you're like, no, I'm going to send it back. Because that's going to be my first instinct. But we got to try one time. If you send it to me again, then you know it's coming back to you. I'm just going to be honest. Not name. But if, let's say, the student attendance, you can see that in the system. <coughs> As a courtesy, go ahead and put that information in there. But if it keeps happening over and over and over after the first time, you need to call me so that we can kind of provide some support to that school. I'm sorry, was there a question? The social worker in your school can view anything from any school. Yes, ma'am. What if we get empty folks? Okay. And when I say empty, you should have just left it at the school. So, I'm going to be honest with you. We've got empty folders at the record center with a name on it in a box. That's what we got. That's what we got. That might be me. And I said it just like that. Don't send us empty folders, please. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Just don't even, some schools have gotten creative so that folders won't be empty. They copy the stuff from the empty campus and drop it in the folders that'll look like something was in the folder. Please put what's supposed to be in there. Um, official transcript, go in the student folder with the principal signature on it. It should be in the folder, so if you send us some seniors, um, folders, and they didn't have the transcript in them. Come on, y'all. We got to do better. Next time, you know, we, 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 we're going to wind up having to, and we're asking that you provide, up, try to upload that information so that when in, in upload document, the one that is signed, that way, when the student comes back to us, we don't have to order the folder. All we have to do is print the signature, the one that's signed offline. It'll already be in the system. Yes, ma'am.
So let me clarify. The only time I should get a Manila folder is if they never attended an APS elementary or an APS middle school. I should not get a Manila folder to represent the high school folder only. Literally. Okay, let me answer it this way. Is the record with us? Yes, ma'am. If the record's with us, they send it straight to the next school. Amen. If you sent it to us, they order it from us. They, you send it to us if they send it to you. Or they'll send it to the record center. They send it to the record center, the clerk. So I want you all to know that you're not just sending them requests. They get every person out of district that left your school, they get those requests too. Oh, so they send them to both places most of the time? A lot of times, they do. Oh. So they get requests from, out of district, I'm coming over there and back there. A lot of times you get out of, and there is a form in here if you are requesting records from another uh, out of district school, you should be using the out of district request form, please. I know you got your own forms with your tigers and bears and lions and everything on it. Please use the APS official out of district request form. Now you are welcome on the form. You are welcome on the form to put your school, type in your school's name from and to who you are doing it to, but don't change the logo at the top. Please, make it the official form. This is what you need to utilize for out of district request. If I had a question earlier about, I got you, on the left and then on the right. If a school asks for records and they're out of district and they never came to pick up the withdrawal from your school and you're trying to make sure that they actually got in school, what I need for you to do Sometimes it can help you. Is it may help for you to go ahead and send when they ask in that request. Yes, you're gonna send the records, but you can also send them that 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 will transfer withdrawal form. And while the parent is sitting there, say please, you know, let them sign this so that you will have the documentation. You have to have some documentation to know that that student actually enrolled on the other end, because otherwise, especially for high school, it's gonna look like that student never dropped out. There have been cases, and I want to say this, there have been cases where a student may have gotten, we don't pray me, something happened, they got into a fight, and you withdrew them. And they were supposed to be in your school, and you thought they went to another school, but because you went ahead and gave them the withdrawal, there was no backup, and then you find out three months later, they're incarcerated or something happened. You need to make sure that you keep the backup documentation to know that a student actually enrolled in a school for your protection. Because when the state goes through and they actually do an audit and you start at the end of the year and they start calling you from student information systems saying you got a lot of U's and you say, I didn't put that U there. That's because when they looked in the state system and they pulled that student's name, it shows that they never enrolled in anybody's other state and it never shows that they ever enrolled in a Georgia school. Yes, ma'am. If you, if you send this, this is if you're requesting records from a school coming to you, a child coming to you. So if a parent comes to your school and they say, all I have is my Georgia Power Bill and my lease. I didn't have time, we had to pick up and leave, I don't have anything. Well ma'am, we're gonna send to the other school to request your information, this is what you use. Now, if another school faxes you something and they're telling you that a student, you still got them on roll. They about at the eighth or ninth day, and you've been wondering where they have been. If that person says to you, they enrolled, and I'm gonna say this out loud, if they say that they enrolled some of those days that's been on your roll, you can then go back and date it to the date they told you that the student actually officially, you can withdraw them for the date that they told you that they officially enrolled on their end. 
Because the parent never came to get the withdrawal. Right. Okay. Okay. Does that count? Yeah. Okay, I got one. <laughs> oh. Because a lot of the school, especially when they're going on to eighth grade, 